Number 42. Calculate the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius for each of the following reactions from the given value of delta G notch, right? Delta G notch given. So we have CS2 gas plus 3Cl2 gas yields CCl4 gas plus S2Cl2 gas. And they give me that Gibbs free energy, right? Delta G notch of a negative 39 kilojoules. Okay, so this is a spontaneous reaction because the delta G is negative. So when we're trying to find out the equilibrium constant, if you have a spontaneous reaction, that means that you'll probably have, I mean, definitely will have more products at the end of the day than reactants. So this equilibrium constant, which is K, should roughly be greater than one. So anytime that you have a spontaneous reaction, your equilibrium constant should be greater than one. So let's see if our hypothesis is true. Now we're, we are solving for K, right? That's the equilibrium constant. Doesn't matter what K value it is, Ka, Kb, Kc, there's only one formula that links equilibrium constant with your Gibbs free energy. And that's this formula right here. If you're solving for K, which is what we're doing today, <laughs> I love to rhyme. But anyway, wow, I'm just, I'm just doing chem videos. Okay, so K equals the E button on the uh, calculator, all raised to the negative delta G over RT. Now, they didn't give me an R value. That's because we have to memorize it. Our value in this case is always going to be 8.314. It's a constant number. And the units, which are joules per mole times Kelvin, is what is going to dictate what the units for the temperature is and what's the units for the delta G. Since we have a Kelvin here, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. But they gave it to us in Celsius. They told me that it was 25 degrees Celsius. But that's okay, because I could just convert Celsius into Kelvin. Right? Plus 273. More specifically, plus 273.15, just to be a little bit more exact. And when we add those two numbers together, we get 298.15. Now let's work on our delta G. According to the R value, it has to be in joules. Oh boy. They gave it to me in kilojoules. But we know how to go from kilojoules to joules. Kilojoules to joules, you just multiply by 1,000. Or you could take the decimal, which is at the end of the nine here, and go to the right three times. So it looks like we're going to get negative 39,000 joules. Big number. Well, actually, really, really, really small number if we put the negative in there. And that's the number that's going to go for your delta G. Okay, we got everything covered. Let's just write it in. Equilibrium constant equals the E on the calculator all raised to the negative something. Now, the negative is in the formula, but now we have another negative value. So negative 39,000, and we're going to divide it by those two values. We got the 8.3 and 4 going on here, and we got the 298, 298.15. Now, before I would raise this with the E button, I would just clean this up, right? Just clean this up, make this one number so that you can just simply just do E raised to the one number. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to put all of this into the calculator. Now a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm, I'm going to override the negatives and I'm just going to put 39,000 divided by 8.314. Now, since I'm not using parentheses here, and I want to show that I need that, that 298.15 in the denominator, I'm going to press divide. That way the calculator understands that the 298.15 is in the denominator. If I accidentally put times without any parentheses, it really thinks that this number is on the top. So that's the difference there. I'm just going to go back and say, I want that in the denominator, 298 not 268, 298.15. Okay, and there we go. So we have E now raised to a nice 15.733 with other numbers, right? Now keep in mind, this is not the final answer. So when you're doing your next step, just make sure that you put all these values in. So I'm gonna say 
K equals, now I just got to find the E button, second LN. That's the E button. And now I'm just going to grab the whole number here. This is why I love the TI-84. Makes everything so easy. And I'm just going to press enter. And whoa, we got it right. Way greater than one. So our hypothesis was correct. But now we just need sig figs. We had a lot of sig figs for our temperature here, but only two sig figs with our delta G. So we're only allowed two sig figs. So I have to put this into scientific notation. It would be the easiest way. So this would be 6.8. Those are your two sig figs times 10 to the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. No units for equilibrium constant, and we are done. Whoop, whoop. Okay. What'd you think? Thank you so much for viewing the video. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. We, you know, we really, really appreciate it if, you know, you guys would tell your friends, tell your classmates, tell anybody just to get the word out there that this, you know, educational channel exists and, you know, free education is, is the way to go, in my opinion, right? What do you guys think, though? Thanks so much. I really hope this is helping. Hope you guys have a great day. and Keep studying hard. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.